Attention, two comments, please. We are about to begin the home one service. If you can be seated, staff and ask you please to be seated. Max Mitchell, one please to be seated at this time. I'm going to ask those persons who are capable of having to take a picture of the QR code. We are limited in programs. I'm going to ask if you can take a picture of the QR code on the back. If you are from the same group, so I'm asking please to share as much as possible. So family, if you have an empty seat next to you, 
Can you just raise your hand so other person can be seated for the service? We're about to begin. So if you have an empty seat next to you, can just indicate so we can have a person seated. Good evening, everybody. First and foremost, I'd like to say my condolences to the family of Mr. Donovan Alexander. My prayers are with you, and we ask God's blessing on you as you go through this journey today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we want to give you thanks and praise first and foremost. We want to acknowledge that you are here in our midst at the beginning of this service. We know there, God, that nothing, nothing is hidden from you and that you know each and every one of us who are seated here by name. I commit every person in this room to you. Let your spirit move in our midst and bring peace. Direct our thoughts to you. We release all feelings of sorrow, pain, longing, and even doubt. We commit our life to your hand and we commit our departed loved one to you. We give him to your care as we also entrust every soul in this room into your capable hands. God, we come to you today and we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you that you brought us all here for this very, very special day. A day, dear Heavenly Father, that it might seem sad, but it's a day that someone is going home to be with you. And so we rejoice in that, knowing that he is in your care and that you are watching over all of us. So we come to you today, dear God, giving you thanks and giving you praise and thanking you for all the things that you continue to do for us, especially those things that we're not even aware that it is you that is working on our behalf. So we say thank you, God. We say thank you for loving us, even though we don't deserve your love. But we say thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will have the Lord, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, by Mike Awua. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> Good evening, all. Psalms 23, the Lord shepherd of his people. The Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, amen. So I was supposed to tell you this before I started, that you should get out your smartphones and find the lyrics to what a friend we have in Jesus, since we don't have a written copy. So. You can do that, and I'm sure most of you already know this song. 
What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not tarry. Everything to God in prayer. Have trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can't we find a friend so fair? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our rest. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise for saying you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find the solace there. Let's sing it a little bit louder. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised, thou will all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory bright and clouded, prayer, rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. Amen. We will now have the obituary by Grace Bigger. Good evening, everyone. Good to see all the beautiful faces, and it's really good to see that everyone is here. Thinking about Donovan and how he has impacted every single one of us. His, his obituary is brief, but his life has been long and impactful, and we cherish every moment. Donovan Alexander Dino Thompson was born at Brooklyn Hospital in Brooklyn, New York on October 19, 1988 to Don Wong, his mom, and Gavin Thompson Sr., his dad. He's remembered by his oldest cousins and family as a kind and well-behaved little boy who always had a huge smile on his face. And many of the younger waves of kids knew he loved to have fun and wasn't afraid to be silly with them. He inherited that from his dad. <laughs> he attended school from pre-K to 12th grade in Brooklyn and then received his associate degree from Catherine Gibbs School in Manhattan. 
He had a passion for video and worked in many media internships, one of which was at NBC with Al Roker. He got his first real job working at the prestigious Beacon Theater as an usher, where he was able to experience and watch many different performances. Soon after, he took his skills to the wonderful world of retail and was part of the team that opened the Fifth Avenue. Now I've been practicing this work all evening. <laughs> Uniqlo. Oh my God. <laughs> The Uniqlo store. It was at Uniqlo where he met some of his best friends and he kept them today. Over the years, he rose to the ranks and ultimately as a supervisor, he had became somewhat of a mentor to almost all of the young employees hired in the time he was there. For many people who met Donovan at Uniqlo, he was highly regarded and was someone who maintained his friendliness while being professional. Ultimately, he found a new home at Apple, where his compassion and care made him a favorite among customers and coworkers alike. He truly enjoyed working at Apple because of the people and because of the people and often expressed how much he missed them when he was away. Donovan met his soulmate Ashley, and she truly is his soulmate, because it takes a soulmate to really, 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 and I mean this, stand by her man. Ashley, 20 thumbs up. <laughs> she is his soulmate, and um, they worked there, and they became fast friends. They fell in love and went on many adventures together travel far and wild, wide while eating anything and everything. Donovan took the adventure to the next level when he proposed to Ashley. After he took Ashley on an incredibly thoughtful surprise trip to Atlanta to swim with her favorite animal. The next year when the world came to a stop, Donovan and Ashley kept it going by getting married on April 20th, 2020, in a private and social distance ceremony in Central Park. Ultimately, the two of them decided to become three, and they welcomed their beautiful son on March 17, 2023, who will carry on Donovan's legacy with his name, Don Nova M. So Nova will always be part of Donovan forever. Donovan was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2018. But of course, our brilliantly positive Dino couldn't be knocked down. Even the storyteller, there was never a moment he wouldn't document and share with the world. And so the world joined in his fight too. In between treatments and hospital visits, he would always share a positive message and a smile and he would read everyone's kind words and prayers to find strength to keep back. He fought incredibly to the very end and continued to be a beacon of strength to us all. Donovan is survived, survived by his wife, Ashley, his son, Nova, his mom, Dawn, his father, Gavin Sr., his brothers, Gavin, Jaden, and his sister, Gavina his grandparents, Walter Reen, Norma, who is deceased, Daddy Kim, Patsy, and Bertram, who is deceased, in-laws Dina and George and Kevin. He is also survived by many uncle, aunts, and cousins and nieces, nephews and friends. So many that if we were to list everyone, this program would be more than one page. <laughs> Absolutely. Don and Ashley, my heart goes out to both of you. I love you dearly, and you can always lean on us, and I'm sure you can lean on everyone in this room here tonight. So be brave, be strong, and know that God is looking over all of us, and he took Donovan from us for a reason. 
but he left a little piece of him in every single one of us. And we will carry that on for many years to come. And we are going to be the village that's going to help you with that little baby. Thank you guys so much. Grace, we will now have a moment of silence. Thank you. So I've been practicing this name, my grace, all evening long. <laughs> and I am so not comfortable that, and I don't want to mess it up. So Sonia Didi <laughs> is going to come in full life. scene in the sitcom. Uh, and it feels weird in a way because everyone knows each other, but they don't, everyone doesn't know that they know each other. So the first five minutes of me meeting him was me staring at my phone at Instagram, looking at him, staring at my phone again, and my friend's Instagram, until I finally said, is this you? Uh, <laughs> little did I know that in a couple of months working alongside him in the pop-up store, I had met someone that was going to be one of my bestest friends in the world. <laughs> we initially bonded over our failed romances in what seems like a blink of an eye and not a series of miscommunications and us being really awkward, hopeless romantics. I found my husband and got him in the mouth of the smartest. <laughs> Um, okay, Donovan found the smartest, strongest, most resourceful, most resourceful woman that I know. Most of us have an expectation that our life will end sometime after our 60s, 70s, 80s, and as select well few of us will be lucky enough to make it to our 90s and our 100s. Most of us who are married say it's sickness and health and expecting that time to be somewhere in a very distant future. If Donovan's life shows us anything, it's that a full life is not defined by a number. Donovan had a full life, a life full of laughter, dancing, traveling, and a lot of good food. <laughs> a lot of good food. <laughs> He was always open to new experiences. He was compassionate, caring, and understanding to the ones that he loved and even to complete strangers. Let us look at the ways in which we can be more open in our own lives. Let us look at the ways we can be more compassionate, caring, and understanding to the ones that we love and even to complete strangers. Because a full life is not defined by a number. Let us, honor, let us honor Donovan's life by making sure we are living ours to the fullest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Um, we are going to sing Blessed Assurance. I am sure everybody knows that, so you can sing lustily. 
than what we sang before. I, I could hear you singing, barely singing, but now I, we're all going to sing lustily because we all know this song, right? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here all salvation, perfect of God, born of this spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, spring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. We will now have thank you from the family of Donovan Thompson. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm reading I'm free. But I like to think of this as saying I'm home with the Lord in respect to Donovan and his family. Don't grieve for me. For now, I'm free. I'm following the path God has laid, you see. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to work, to play. Task left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my party has left the void, then fill it with remember joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Oh yes, these things too, even us. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seems all too brief. Don't think, don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to thee. God wanted me now. He has called me home to thee. Thank you. So now we have come to the end of our service. And before I give it over to the funeral director to give you instructions on final viewing and um, the other stuff that's going to be happening tomorrow, I just want to say that I have never met Donovan. But I feel like if I know him now, based on the fact that all of you took time out of your busy lives to come to celebrate his life, that speaks volumes. It tells of what a kind person he was. I also know Donovan because his aunt always talked about him at church. She always talks about him. She always talks about how positive he was and how even through his illness, there was still positivity going on. He was still living his life. And that is the message that he has left for all of us, that we must continue to live our life, live a life that is full of Jesus' love, live a life that tells the story that we will see him one day. I just want to say thank you to his family for giving me this opportunity to officiate this service. My prayers are with you all. I will continue to pray for you each and every day. And now I will call on the funeral director so he can give you instructions on final view. Okay, Omar wants to say something. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, so my parents had uh, asked me to write a poem, which I did not, because I just pictured me telling Donovan that I'd be saying a poem at his funeral, and I could not imagine him cracking up like I, I figured he'd just like laugh with a brightest smile and be like yo like you don't gotta do that at my funeral because that's just the type of person Donovan is and um normally I wouldn't have got up here and said anything but uh I went to go visit him probably like the Sunday before he passed and just the one thing that I took from our conversation was that if you want to do something, you got to do it all the way. There's no like trying to do it. There's no wanting to do it. It's doing it. And the fact that he was able to relay that message to me with the last bit of air, 
he had left of his body just shows the strength that Donovan was raised with. Not that he had, but that he was raised with. So, I want to shout out what you do. I want to shout out Uncle Gavin, because I don't know how, like, the goofiest man on the planet and the sweetest woman on the planet can raise two fine, strong men. And, um, I want the uh, I want, I want the young, I want all my little cousins to come up here with me. Like, the, I feel like the grown ups have their time, but I want my, my cousins with me up here. You too, Julie. You're older than me, but you know me. And um, I feel like this is really what Donovan would have wanted, and that's no, like knowing that the generation after him. Has something to model after. And I want him to know that his family is here tonight. Because when he was on that bed, all he had was Ashley. And I witnessed that with my own two eyes. And he never made it seem like anyone owed him anything. He was on his last breath. And all he wanted was some water. He wasn't begging for no hearts, he wasn't begging for no help. He knew he had his woman, and he knew he had his son, and those were the only two things that mattered in that moment. And now I realize that the life is about family, and the people are still where you're not. So I just want to thank everybody for being here, and I want all my cousins to know that I love y'all. And we don't speak that much, but the family needs to come together, and it can't be only moments like this when we get to know that we love each other. So. I was going to say that to my Thing I've had to deal with, as you can see, <laughs> I'm not really an expressive, you know, external person, but I have to be strong for my brother. I'm glad we're all here. This family is a good reminder, the perfect reminder of love, what love really is, love, strength, you know? And I, I needed this. <laughs> we all need each other. I love you.
We just want to extend our sincere condolences to you, the family, and also thank you for entrusting us with the final care of your lover. It was definitely indeed a pleasure serving you. To the wife and mother, I want everyone to put their own applause for these two wonderful women. I know it's not easy losing a son. It's not easy raising a son. So the mother lost the son, but she actually gained a grandson. And now it will be her new Donovan. Amen? So this afternoon, while we celebrate the life of Mr. Donovan, I'm going to say, please remember the family in the prayers. Because this is when reality actually kicks in tomorrow, when we take them take our brother or friend to his final resting place. Amen? So please remember the family in your prayers. You may not be able to visit every day, but just remember a mother who lost her son, or a single mother who's about to raise a son. Amen? Yeah. At this moment, we're having a final viewing. We'll be meeting tomorrow morning at the St. Stevenson Church, 2806 Newkirk Avenue, for service at 9 a.m. Amen? Yeah. Black people type 830. <laughs> I might be late, but it's one of my early. Maybe start exactly at 9. Amen? Yeah. Please don't let Donovan get there before you guys. <laughs> Maybe continue the celebration of life for Mr. Donovan. After which, we'll be taking him to his final resting place, which will be Cypress Hill Cemetery. Following the interment, we'll be meeting back at the church at 2 p.m. for a repast where we celebrate the life of Mr. Thompson. Amen? Amen. At this point, I'm going to ask each and every one for the kind cooperation. We've been good so far. So for the person standing on my left, I'm going to ask you, please, Make it to my far right. We'll be having one line for the final viewing. We're going to be starting from person standing at this side as well. And ask you, please make it over to my right. We'll be having a final viewing. We'll be coming from my far right, your left. My right, your left. One line. We're going to pay a last respect to our brother, our friend. After which, I'm going to ask you, please proceed to your vehicles. And have yourself a blessed evening. So for those who would like to pay the last respect, we'll be closing this door off. This is exit only. So if you'd like to pay the last respect, I'll to make it over to this side now. The back door will be closed off. So if you'd like to pay the last respect, I'll to just go around to pay the last respect. We'll be having one line. Please be seated. We have been good so far, and it's asking to, for your kind cooperation. So we have one line, please be seated. Once a person who are standing, pay the last respect, we'll be starting from the right. And ask you, please do not acknowledge the family this time. The immediate family will be seated as they'll be doing a private final viewing. So if you're not a part of the immediate family, Please do not, I repeat, do not greet the family at this moment. So if you're a family member, immediate family, please be seated on the first four rows on both sides as we'll be doing a final game. For those who are standing at the door, if you'd like to pay last respect, we ask you to come now. So for those who are standing at the door, if you'd like to pay last respect, please come now. The immediate family, please to be seated. The immediate family having a private viewing. So once you are viewed, please wait for the family on the outside. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.